Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Tuesday, 5th March, 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. CARICOM nationals soon to be able to enjoy unrestricted time in member states. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. Citizens of CARICOM countries will soon have the opportunity to extend their stays in sister countries beyond six months to further the region's single market and economy. This initiative, delayed for three years due to the COVID-19 pandemic, is now being revisited. Tiana Cole has further details in this HGP Nightly News item. As CARICOM is on track to achieve a single market economy within the region, Barbados Prime Minister Mia Motley revealed at a final press conference for the CARICOM Heads of Government meeting on Wednesday that citizens of CARICOM countries will soon be able to travel and remain in respective countries in the region for longer than a six-month period. As you know, um, people have the right to move now for six months without question. What we are talking about is removing that six-month constraint, but we equally have to understand what are the minimum rights that are guaranteed to our citizens when they move from one country to the other, and those are being resolved and settled now. According to Motley, a regional capital market initiative that makes it simpler for capital to find its natural place and obtain the best investment possible is necessary if one is to enable a proper flow of capital. People must have an unrestricted movement inside the area in order to accomplish this. There were just two policy issues that were referred to heads for us to settle, and they will meet back on the 7th of March. The Legal Affairs Committee will sign off on the drafts on the 8th of March, and the heads of government will meet on the 15th of March with the hope that we can sign off in time for the deadline given in Trinidad of the 31st of March for the full freedom of movement of people. The Prime Minister reiterated that while persons have the right to move now for six months without question, this may soon be removed completely. The move will also ease the burden of doing business in the region. Tianco reporting for HGP Nightly News. More effort is required to raise the children of a new generation if we are to overcome this period of violence and violent crime. This from Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Keith Rowley. He was speaking during a media conference on Wednesday on his return from the CARICOM 46th Heads of Government meeting in Guyana. More in this report by Mahalia Joseph Wharton of TTT News. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said the trauma associated with children witnessing violent acts and growing up in homes where domestic violence is experienced was discussed among CARICOM heads. The Prime Minister of St. Kitts is an expert in this matter and he raised the whole question of the violence that children are exposed to within the home. I speak here about domestic violence because many of these criminals come from a home somewhere. He said the government will soon be asked to consider the establishment of a commission that targets families. Where families can get help, can play a role in being more effective in raising children because what we are taking for granted is no longer there. In an earlier time, the parenting of children by parents and grandparents and the society and the villages and the towns, that was sufficient to bring them up with a certain amount of uh, perspective. The Prime Minister said such a measure can start from the school system. On the topic of music, Dr. Rowley said imposing an all-out ban on derogatory and violent lyrics might prove to be difficult. We discussed it at length. But we make a, dis- a distinction between condemning it and banning it. Because we believe that to talk about bans 
to ban something is simply to make it more attractive to those who would want to use it. He added that there can be a restriction of what he described as tasteless content in public spaces and on public airways. In today's technological world, you can't ban something like that because you might say you don't want it on TTT, you don't want it in a public space. But social media will make sure it's available to all who want it. And that's one of the difficulties that the current world faces. There was a time if you say don't print it in the newspaper, that's the end of that. Dr. Rowley said those in the music business should understand that violent music can have damaging effects. Mahalia Joseph Wharton, TDT News. Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew of St. Kitts and Nevis meet with Saudi Arabia's Minister of State for Foreign Affairs in Guyana on the sidelines of the 46th CARICOM Heads of State Conference. In a posting on 28th February, Prime Minister Drew indicated that the discussions with the Saudi Arabian official was productive. He wrote, quote, I had a fruitful discussion with the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, His Excellency Adel al Jaber, on the sidelines of the 46th regular meeting of the CARICOM Heads Conference. St. Kitts and Nevis is grateful for the partnership with Saudi Arabia towards the transformation of our energy sector in the name of climate resilience, sustainability, and economic transformation. I have also secured scholarships for our students to study in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Scholarships will be available later this year, end quote. The Prime Minister had been holding meetings with various representatives of governments and agencies as he participated in the CARICOM Summit. Glenn Bart reporting for SK Newsline. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. With the increase of cyber attacks in Trinidad and Tobago, Central Bank Governor Dr. Alvin Hilaire says cybersecurity safety is priority number one when it comes to protecting the bank's information and data. Here is Andrea Perez-Sobers of CNC3 Business Watch with more. While chat GPT is efficient for the workplace, Central Bank Governor Dr. Alvin Hilaire says it is important to safeguard their identity. Hilaire gave an example as to how he instructed ChatGPT to write remarks on artificial intelligence and cybersecurity, and the remarks should last about one minute. However, he explained what are the risks behind this. Now, who is to say that Alvin didn't write this? Or who is to say who is who are our customers, who are our financial institutions, who are our supervisors? AI could mask a whole set of things, so we have to be very careful about identity theft and about misrepresentation and mimicking of our uh, data and of our systems. On cyber resilience, Assistant Manager of Information and Cybersecurity, Kisha Lashley, says financial institutions need to have their guard up at all times as ransomware attacks are on the rise. But you just see it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, Something I just want to take note of is that the attackers, uh, as David said, uh, they they offer malware as a service, um, multifunctional malware. Mm -hmm. So it's tough as defenders, um, but we have to try and keep peace. You know, we have to evolve and, you know, assess and and, and keep growing even as as the attackers, you know, do their bits. Dr. Hale and Lashley were speaking at the Central Bank's Artificial Intelligence, Cyber Resilience and Cyber Security Conference. According to Dr. Vincent Adams, Vice President Barrett Jack Day of Guyana seems to be mistaken as there are no $20 billion in assets in the event of an oil spill, nor is there a 52% profit in the oil sector for Guyana. This HGP News item tells us more. Our second Vice President, Jack Dio, is confused, lacks understanding, or simply dishonest. For there are no $20 billion assets to cover an oil spill. That's Dr. Vincent Adams, environmental engineer and a member of the Alliance for Change, at the party's weekly press conference. 
The party member added that the 52% oil revenues that ExxonMobil is currently advertising is an alleged billboard hoax. The disbelief of what was being spouted by this self-anointed oil guru from whom the people are expecting truthful information about our God-given patrimony. The VP must be either a very slow learner, confused, or just can't help himself. The environmentalist added that instead of the VP mocking the media and environmentalists about not reporting about the parent company guarantee, he should use Tobago's oil spill as an eye-opener with Guyana being in more danger of having a larger oil spill than what is currently being experienced in Tobago. Instead of him seeing this as a lessons learned, to improve our grossly inadequate preparation for any such spill. If this $30,000 or so buyer spill is a national disaster, imagine what it will be with a 1 million buyer spill or 25 times Tobago's. He also added that the VP must explain his reason for being reckless about the possible consequences the region's environment fishing and the tourism industry will face by continuing production of oil way above the safety limit. Travis Chase, HGP Nightly News. The United Nations being formally advised by regional countries of their readiness to assist Haiti's security. This year, Richards of HGP Nightly News reports. The Bahamas, Bangladesh, Barbados, Menayan and Chad have formally notified the United Nations of their intent to contribute personnel to the international force to help Haitian national police fight armed gangs, a UN spokesman said on Thursday. Contributions of $10.8 million have also been deposited into a trust fund to support the multinational security support mission. UN spokesman Stefan Dujaric said, adding that further pledges of 78 million had also been made. The United Nations Security Council authorized in October a foreign security mission to Haiti a year after the Caribbean country asked for help to fight violent gangs that have largely overrun its capital, Port au Prince. The 50 member council's resolution requires countries to inform UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres of their participation in the security mission. While approved by the Security Council, the mission is not a UN operation. The response to Haiti's request for help was delayed due to a struggle to find a country willing to lead a security assistance mission. Kenya stepped forward last year with a pledge of 1,000 police. But a local court barred the move as unconstitutional. Kenyan President William Roto has said the plan was a go-ahead. However, it was not yet notified by Guterres. Dujaric said Benign has said it plans to send about 1,500 personnel. It was not yet immediately clear how many personnel the remaining four countries have pledged. Separately, the United Nations said some 5.5 million people in Haiti, half the population, need humanitarian assistance and it is appealing for 600. 174 million in 2024. Last year, the UN only received a third of the money it requested, sent UN humanitarian coordinator for Haiti, Ulrika Richardson. I'm Daisy Richards. Thank you for watching. Until next time. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so glad to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially.